This is not my car, but I will be borrowing it for the next two months. So I thought it would be really cool to take this car in its most adventure ready version and then take it on the most epic road trip that I can. Plus, Subaru's letting me borrow it, so we're using it. Shiny car, little buddy. You're not gonna look like this when I'm done with you. This is my show, gosh darn. Before I hit the road, I wanted to give you a quick tour of everything that is in and on this car. Let's check it out. Uh, this is Tucker. Tucker is also gonna go on the road trip. This is Rainer's dog. Yeah, good boy. All right, sweet, let's do it. This is like, I'm not gonna lie, it looks pretty awesome, so get ready. Bam! Does it look awesome on camera? I said it looks awesome and now I realize it might not actually look that cool. I think it's cool. <laughs> so we have the Dometic water cooler. It's a hard-sided water can that has a tube with a pump inside. The especially cool thing about this is it's magnetic and it moves, so you can easily move this around. I actually discovered this when I was at Outdoor Retailer last year and got super psyched on it because I was like, that would have been perfect in my van. So I'm really excited to get to use it in this car. Behind the water container, we have our cook kick. Our cook kit, cook kit, cook kit, yeah. Inside here you have a refillable propane can. So the reason that I'm using this for my two burner stove rather than just like the green disposable propane is that we'll be cooking food for at least two to four people most nights. And so this is gonna be a lot less expensive. It's a lot less waste. Um, it's a lot easier to just have a larger container of propane that I can refill rather than continuing to have disposable green cans of propane. So that's what's in here. This uh, lightweight two burner stove is the Coleman, I think original is what they call it, or Coleman Classic. Dometic makes these electric coolers basically that can be set to any temperature. So they can either be refrigerated or they can be even frozen goods in there. Rather than running this to the car directly, I have it plugged into a Goal Zero battery that is in the footwell in the back passenger seat. And then that battery is actually running into the car to charge. As we are driving, that battery is charged by the car and then the cooler is powered by the battery. So even when we stop, the cooler still stays powered and can still keep stuff cold. Pretty high tech, I'm not gonna lie, actually very high tech. <laughs> Okay, so we have my buckwheat pillow. We have a small table from Snow Peak. We have the wearable sleeping bag that I'll never travel anywhere without. Most of the places I'll be camping with this car will not actually be established campgrounds, but more of like dispersed off-road style campgrounds. So this will basically act as my picnic table, that will act as my cooking table, and this will act as a side table. Plus I'm traveling with three other people and a dog. We need tables. This Camp Galley Deluxe by Kelty has all of our camp cooking and kitchen gear in here. Bowls, silverware, French press, small pots and pans, mugs, coffee grinder, spatulas, like a beer koozie. Last but not least is this hard sided bin. It was mostly empty right now. The plan was to have this for all the dried goods and food that we would need that doesn't have to wind up in the cooler. Does that make sense? This is our road trip snack cooler. So this is just sitting in the back seat here on top of the battery. So we have access to those things as we're driving. All right, that pretty much covers everything inside the car. I'm gonna show you what I have on top and what's gonna go on the back of the car. So sweet talking. You got it, buddy. You got it, come on, come on. Okay, all right. Let's go, come on. We're gonna get it. Come on. You might have actually seen this rack if you watched a video that I did last year where I showed you updates to my van, Vincent. And the super cool thing about it is that it's modular. So you can actually take off this cargo rack, you can take off this bike rack, and then I have a tabletop that goes on top here as well, which is gonna be really super helpful for like cooking and eating food out here. The reason I have a bike rack is because I will be bringing my bike with me. I am gonna be doing another bike packing trip later in the summer, and I just wanted to be able to carry the bike with me on this trip. I have the tabletop, 
in this bag. That's for the exo rack on the back. I also have two additional tents for our crew and for Rainer and Tucker. I've got a folding chair up here. I've got a really big double wide sleeping pad. For the most part, this is pretty empty, but that's because the ladder for the rooftop tent actually has to get stored in here as well. So once we get that in here, we'll be able to see how much additional space we have for other things like bags. The rooftop tent is actually designed to only take up half of the roof rack so that you can also have a rooftop box. I will say that I've already discovered that it's a little challenging to open and close the tent with a roof box on here, but it is really cool that we can have this storage, but also have the rooftop tent. So Thule's designed this tent so that it can collapse down before it folds in half, which is how they make it have a smaller footprint on top of the rack. So these three poles on either side actually collapse downward, which makes the pole structure smaller and then it can fold in half and take up less space. I've only done it for the first time today, so I'm hoping to get like really good and really fast at setting up this rooftop tent. Great, that's it. This is my little, this is my little home, my little tree house that I'll be sleeping in for the next chevron munch now i have to take all of this stuff and fit it into here before we can hit the road go team i'm just nervous i don't know if these, these cars lock on their own can you lock yourself out of a car like this It is 12.30, I still have six hours of driving to do until I get to my first stop, which is on the Oregon coast. So we're gonna hit the road, and then when we're on the way, I'll tell you where we're headed. Let's go. Woo woo woo, I'm going, I'm going. Wait, hold on. <laughs> Abby, come on! Woo. Okay, what do you guys think? Should we go, or should we just wait? Should we just stay here? when I eat on camera and you have to listen to audio of me chewing text mix. I told you I would tell you where we are going once we got in the car. So now that we are driving, I can tell you that we are headed towards San Francisco. Boom! People say San Fran. People like from San Francisco say San Fran. But I say Bay Area. We Seattleites are traveling south towards the desert. We'll pass by large trees, and from there we'll see some water, and then from the water we'll see a large bridge, and then the episode will be over. Yeah? 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 Here we are! Wow, this was like the easiest to find campsite. So close and yet in the woods. So we found this campsite on Hip Camp, which is a website that allows you to basically look for privately owned sites that people then rent out to campers. Um, and this was like the closest one to Newport that I could find, also on such last minute notice because I didn't book a site until today. But it's kind of perfect. Yeah, let's go ahead and set up camp. Also, look at these skills. I had this idea. I was like thinking it might be good if you like explained something to me that I like already know a lot about. Now we're talking. Say good night, Miranda. Good night, Miranda. Good morning! It is uh, just after 9 a.m. here. We started pretty early this morning on our drive because we have a packed day driving to the Redwoods in California, which I've never seen before and I'm super excited to get to see. Along the way to the Redwoods, we'll be driving on the Oregon and the California coast. And there's two other spots that I wanna stop. One is the Natural Bridges Overlook. And then there's also an area where we should be able to see some sand dunes. But the ultimate goal is get to the Redwoods. Actually to get through the redwoods, but yay driving. I'm drinking my, I'm drinking a chai tea latte. I had a cup of coffee this morning that was not very good because I'm still learning how to use the hand grinder and French press. I slept super well last night in the rooftop tent. There's still a lot of like learning curves. I feel like I'm trying to like figure out how to use all that gear, but uh, it was a really like awesome night's sleep and it was pretty easy to set up at that campsite. Let's go see some dudes. Just doing it. Just doing it. 
you know who's doing it. Wow, walking on the sand is hard. Wow. Really beautiful. It's like another planet, you know? You have all of these sand dunes, all of these like small plants here. This is just one spot where you can see the Oregon sand dunes. There are parts of this coast where you're just surrounded by these mountains of sand, but this overlook is really cool. So definitely worth, worth the detour. You hardly even call it a detour. It literally was on the highway. Definitely worth it. All right. We've arrived at the Natural Bridges viewpoint on the Samuel H. Boardman State Scenic Corridor. Oh, cool. Oh my gosh, neat. <gasps> there are these two natural bridges that create this little cove. This is gorgeous. The cool thing about this area also is that there's an Oregon Coast Trail, like a backpacking trail that goes all along the Oregon coast. Wow, y'all, this is awesome. Next stop, the Redwoods. Yay, driving. <laughs> trees here we come they should call it big tree national forest wow look at that there is i've never seen a town named after me <laughs> to be fair the town's <laughs> not named after me <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's better before you were born Miranda. <laughs> do you think california watched our youtube show <laughs> yeah. california <laughs> auto tour pamphlet pickup oh my god we get a pamphlet Oh guys, I hope they have them. Never has there been so much stoke over a pamphlet. Maybe ever. Wait, what'd you call it? Pamphlet. Pamphlet? Yeah. Pamphlet. No. Pamphlet. The age, I feel like the age is silent. Pamphlet yeah. is pamphlet. not pamphlet. It's pamphlet. Pamphlet? No, it is not. Pamphlet. Yes, it, yeah. Pamphlet? <laughs> Wait, do you yeah. Pamphlet? <laughs> no, pamphlet is, pamphlet sounds ridiculous. Pamphlet sounds like a Pokemon. Pamphlet! <laughs> So there are a lot of different stops that we could take off of the Avenue of the Giants like byway here, but we're just gonna pick two of them because there's just so much to see still and we still have to get to San Francisco today. So I'd mostly just enjoy this beautiful drive. This is the right direction, right? Yes. We are stopping at the very first grove that was ever uh, bought by the Save the Redwoods League. I think it's this thing right here. Yeah, okay. Wow, look at that, I didn't miss it. There is something really humbling about like standing in this forest, surrounded by trees that have been here for literally thousands of years. You know, I think about my, my time here, I have this attitude of like, oh, it's just not enough time in the redwoods, you know? But like to these trees, I am like a tiny blip in their day. I'm like a second in their lifetime, you know? It's, uh, it's kind of cool to think about. Also, the Save the Redwoods League has done a lot to try and protect a lot of these groves, and tons of money has been donated to the state park just to protect these trees. I think I'm really grateful for that. I'm really grateful that people have put in effort and um, money. Getting to see them is really awesome, and I want other people to be able to see them too. We're gonna make one more very touristy stop before we make our way to San Francisco. I don't think our car is gonna fit though. Are we gonna make it? Definitely not. <laughs> Like almost. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
<laughs> we did it! Oh, like, we can walk through again. Or we let cars go. Yeah, yeah. I gotta be honest, I feel like this tree would be cooler if it didn't have a hole in it, but it's still pretty awesome. <laughs> All right, y'all, we are going to San Francisco. Oh, San Francisco. Also, this is not a Subaru commercial at all, but I'm really enjoying driving this car. <laughs> it just like has a lot more like oomph than Vince does, you know? I like our whole setup. I feel like we're getting good at pulling stuff out of the trunk to get to snacks. Oh, this whole drive has been a reminder to me that the journey is... Yeah. The journey is the destination. Journey is the destination. Yeah. We have made it to San Francisco. This trip was beautiful, but the best part is that this is only the beginning. I'm about to spend the next two months living out of this Subaru. I have some of the biggest adventures that this crew has ever been on planned for the summer. We're going kayak camping, bike packing. We're gonna hike a 14,000 foot mountain in Colorado. Hopefully no one gets elevation sickness. We'll be doing some off-roading and a lot more in between. So if you liked this video, I think you're gonna love what I have planned next. So make sure that you subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and I will see you in the wild. Good morning. I really need coffee.